Welcome back to the big Saturday show. Convicted killer Alec Murdoch now with shaved head sentenced to life in prison for the June 2021 murders of his wife Maggie and son Paul. After both the defense and prosecution rested their cases, the jury deliberated for less than three hours before handing down a guilty verdict. One juror spoke to Fox Digital saying, quote, we were all pretty sure we knew what had happened and we knew who had pulled the trigger. We prayed together. We prayed before we went in. We prayed before we came out to give the verdict. That was a huge factor in us being able to sit comfortably with our decision. And Charlie, that's pretty striking for a juror to talk about prayer. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's amazing. And I love this story because um, I, I love the efficiency with which they deliberated. <laughs> they weren't wasting time. And, and, you know, talking about the common sense that, that, that we need in this country in order to, to operate with uh, under self-governance, they displayed that kind of common sense. And when, when you look around all, all across our country at all of the, the institutions of our country and people are so frustrated and people feel like they've all kind of ground to a halt, this is an example where our most important, our most precious institution of our, of our uh, entire country is still working and works properly. And the reason it works is because it's entirely run by ordinary citizens. Ordinary citizens displaying common sense. And obviously there is no role for prayer in the court system, but as, uh, as, as free-thinking individuals serving on a jury, uh, their, uh, their willingness to, to, to get together, pray, and make the right decision um, I think it is a it's a it's a beacon for the rest of our our country uh, in terms of of how to to move forward and and I, I've always believed this the only way forward for our country is through uh, empowering ordinary citizens. Yeah, and there was an enormous amount of evidence yeah. that these jurors had to go through. But what jurors have been saying in interviews with Fox and others is that it really came down to this one video that was shot by one of the victims, Paul Murdoch. Watch. Hey, he's got a bird in his mouth. Bubba. Hey, Bubba. That's a guinea. This is a chicken. Come here, Come here, Cash. Come here, Cash. Quit. That video was recorded four minutes before the prosecution said Alec Murdoch shot his his wife and his son. And the juror told Fox Digital, quote, I think it's incredible timing on Paul's part. I don't think that anyone would have ever known that he was down there if it wasn't for that video. I think that there's a lot of evidence that points towards Alec, but I feel like that does solidify it. It says a lot that somebody that couldn't speak, somebody that couldn't be a witness was able to be a witness even after they passed away. Um, Kat, I just thought that was such a poignant um, message from the juror and, and a moment in the, in the trial. Absolutely. I mean, yes, there was a lot of evidence pointing towards him, but also there was a lot of things about it that were interesting where you could have maybe pinned it on somebody else. I mean, it's not like there was nobody in this town that had any reason to hate this family. <laughs> right. I, like, everybody hated this family. But then again, you have a video that places him at the scene of the crime and the, at the time of the crime that you have to look at that and it's really, really difficult, no matter how good he was on the witness stand, which I think he, he was pretty good on the witness stand. Um, he's a sociopath, so you can be convincing if you're a sociopath. Um, all of those other possibilities go out the window when you have something like that and he just had no idea that that was out there. Yeah, and, um, and Kat talks about him being on the stand. You know, a lot of people who watch that thought he did a pretty good job. However, there were a lot of folks who were following this case who thought he was lying through his teeth, which the jurors totally did as well. But, you know, that video, he had told investigators prior to the discovery of that video that he was not there. Yeah. And so the jurors had that. And then it was in, in his son's own voice and then his own voice on that tape. It was just really interesting. It's, it's the smoking phone, right? Right, and, right. And 330 million people now had the ability to capture moments that if this was, say, the OJ situation, no one had this ability to get mm. things on, on, on here. And the thing is, it's, it's uh, investigating 101, I guess, where you go through the phone. I would think they'd be looking at texts and emails to look at the videos on there. That, that was so smart. And 
in the end, that's what jurors say, that this was the tipping point, this video. There's no other conclusion, logically, that you could come to, that somebody who was there talking to the victims four minutes beforehand actually uh, was not the killer here. But you hear the voices, particularly of the son. Mm -hmm. He seemed so happy. He had no idea what was about to happen to him. And that's, that's the sad yeah, part Yeah, just absolutely And obviously uh, Maggie, the wife as well. And also, I mean, when a crime is committed and one of the victims is someone in their 20s, of course they're recording. And right. of course that, right. that's going to end up coming into the case. I just thought if this just would have been two people who were in their 40s and 50s, we would have been in a different situation. But, you know, young folks are recording all the time. Yeah. And, and in the final minutes, what, what this was a 27-day uh, trial or 17, whichever. Uh, in the final minutes of the, of the trial, as the uh, prosecution was wrapping up their case, uh, they listed the most important witnesses uh, none of whom took the stand. One of them was uh, Paul, uh, who his father kept referring to as Papa. Uh, and then the other one, of course, was Bubba the dog, because if Bubba hadn't grabbed that chicken and come running up, uh, uh, Alec Murdaugh never would have been caught on videotape and his lies never would have been exposed. Yeah, that's a very good point. And, and also, I think this case also highlights what really good journalism is. Um, there were local journalism journalists there. Um, Mandy Matney, she's one of them who has, she hosts of one of the most popular podcasts regarding this case, but she shined an unrelenting light on this case from the very beginning before anybody else was paying attention. And then as her podcast gained um, listeners, more and more people were paying attention and the national media started to get on board with this case and really getting to know this family and its history and this this case is this murder case may be over and it, i'm sure sure there will be an appeal but it is not over no. for alec murdoch because he still has the financial crimes that he has to deal with and there are people who have died around this mm -hmm. family um, that have been spoken for by their family members who are also cheated out of money. When, wow. when I first heard about this case, I, like, I actually remember where I was. I was like, this can't, this is, this is all this is real. I was right. like, I need to just go down there and figure out what's going on. How have they just been able to, all these people keep dying and all this, and, and, and they're just allowed to do it. And now, the, then remember when he, you know, tried to kill himself or whatever, but it didn't work. I mean, there was not a twist that it didn't occur. And again, he's got a lot more to answer for going forward. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, but, you know, we'll continue to cover it. And I think that there's a fascination um, down there. But you, the folks of this, in this area, yeah. they have been under the thumb of this family. Yep. And the judge pointed that out too, Conch. Wow. That's yeah. true. And, and I wonder how prison's going to go for Alex Murdoch. Right. Probably not going to have many friends. No. Probably not going to have many friends. Because he's actually, think so. actually put some people in there as exactly. well. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 And so. to think about, I mean, like, you know, the whole thing about having to take the portrait of for the family portrait right. down out of the courtroom or out of the courthouse in order so that the jury wouldn't be influenced by that. And then to see this guy with his, uh, you know, coming in in the, in the beige uh, or whatever, the, the brown jumpsuit, leg irons, shackled uh, in those orange flip flops coming out of the van. It's amazing.